Question number 10, David Clendon. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Tourism and asks what advice, if any, has he sought regarding the impact on New Zealand's tourism industry of last week's UK Guardian article, which says that our, quote, green image increasingly defies reality? The Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, um, I have not asked for specific advice because I already understand the impact such articles can have, as I pointed out to Federated Farmers in my speech to them this morning. However, that does not mean I accept all the points made in that particular article the member is referring to. David Clendon. A supplementary to the Minister. Did he seek advice earlier this year when the World Economic Forum Travel and Tourism Report ranked New Zealand 92nd on climate change performance? And if so, what advice did he receive? The Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, no, but I did lament that we had nine years of a Labor government who did absolutely nothing in that area. <laughs> David Clendon. <laughs> Order, I've called David Clendon. What is he Order. doing in response to New Zealand coming last, according to the same report, at, protect at protecting threatened species? And does he think this delivers on our 100% pure brand? The Honourable Prime Minister. Sorry, could I just ask the member to repeat it because it's a little uh, noisy on that I side? I absolutely accept the Prime Minister's point. Could I ask David Clendon to repeat his question? And I'd ask the House to show some courtesy to a new member. David Clendon. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister, what is he doing in response to New Zealand coming last, according to that same report, at protecting threatened species? And does he think this delivers on our 100% pure brand? The Honourable Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, we're working to improve that area. We've made it clear in areas like um, conservation uh, that we are keen to engage with the private sector and to deal with areas like that. And when it comes to climate change, um, we're working hard to have policies that actually work as opposed to a rhetoric from the previous government. Entry, Mr. Speaker. Charles Chevelle. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. So is the 100% uh, pure brand still the focus of tourism policy in New Zealand? If so, how is this compatible with opening the Dock Estate up to further mining? Jerry Brownlee's Petroleum Action Plan announced earlier today, 110 billion subsidy to polluters, and an emissions trading scheme that the Parliamentary Commissioner for the Environment says will actually see an increase in greenhouse gas emissions. The Honourable Prime uh, Minister. Mr Speaker, uh, yes, 100% Pure is uh, still the brand campaign that we're running. Secondly, I'd remind the member that there are 82 concessions currently on the conservation estate, many of which were issued by the previous Labor government. And uh, lastly, Mr Speaker, unlike... <laughs> that's, that's irrelevant. That's, that's, that's a good one, actually. That's a, that's a little bit... That's a little bit like the uh, carbon neutral statement that the previous government wheeled out, but unfortunately allowed our emissions to go through the roof. But it's okay, this government will fix that problem up. David Clendon. Order. Order. I've called David Clendon. I've just asked members to show some courtesy to a member, new member at the back of the House. I want to hear him, David Clendon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the Minister. Does he agree with the United Nations World Tourism Organisation that New Zealand has managed to capture the world's imagination with its consistent branding? And does he also agree that it is crucially important that the reality is in turn consistent with that branding? The Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, yes and yes, and that's why we work hard to uh, protect our environment. Will the Minister then accept the very kind offer made by Greenpeace? to pay for his fear to the climate change conference in Copenhagen in order to demonstrate to the many potential international tourists that New Zealand does take its environmental responsibility seriously. The Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, uh, no, I won't be accepting the cheque uh, from, uh, from Greenpeace to go to Copenhagen. It's very unlikely that I would be going there. I'll be well represented by Tim Grocer and Nick Smith and anyway, I'll be far too busy reading the comments from the co-leader of the Green Party about why she thinks Phil Goff's a racist. <laughs> Point of order, Matthew Tudor. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, I take exception to that comment. My, what I said on the radio this morning is absolutely accurate, and I stand by those words. But the description of them by the, by the Prime Minister of this country was derogatory and disgusting, and I ask that it be withdrawn and apologised for. I ask that, and I order, 
Order. No order. I don't need further help on this, and I don't know who made that interjection, but that's not helpful either. It was fortunate I didn't pick up who it was. Uh, I'd ask the Prime Minister. That was totally unnecessary. And I'd ask the Prime Minister to stand with and apologise for that comment. I'll withdraw the apology. I thank the Prime Minister. Order. Order. Uh, Charles Chevelle. Point of order, sir. Point of order, sir. Point of order, Charles Chevelle. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I see. Order. Now, look, I'd call the point of order for the Honourable Leader of the Opposition's own colleague, and he made an interjection that is totally unparliamentary. He knows it. I'll now ask the Honourable Leader of the Opposition to stand, withdraw, and apologise for that. Charles Chevelle. Look at him just smiling away. Order. A, order. A point of order is being heard, and the senior members order the Prime Minister will also be quiet. Hey. I say to both the Deputy Prime Minister and the Prime Minister and the all senior members, uh, today, OK, we've had a fair bit of fun because it's been... But I think we should just show a little decorum. There have been a lot of visit in the gal visitors, visitors in the gallery that will not have been that impressed. Charles Chevelle, point of order. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. I seek leave to table a copy of a cheque uh, raised by Greenpeace members via cake stalls and sausage sizzles for $4,781 to enable the Prime Minister to attend the Copenhagen Climate Change Conference. Order. Order. Now, look, I, I meet, recently made a ruling on, uh, on making it clear to members I would not be seeking leave of the House to table uh, documents that had or, or articles that had nothing to do with providing information for members of the House, where it's purely political grandstanding, it's demeaning of this parliament. And, uh, and I would ask members not to do that, or I will uh, you know, take serious steps in the future. Uh, question number, or point of order, the Honourable Darren Hughes. Mr Speaker, can I ask you to, to reflect on that? The Prime Minister, in his answer, referred to the check uh, from Greenpeace. He introduced that uh, material into the House in his answer. My colleague is simply tabling the information that the Prime Minister referred to in his answer. I've ruled on the matter, and that's the end of the matter. Question number 11, Sua William Sio. Our point of order, I apologise. Point of order, David Clendon. Uh, Mr Speaker, I seek leave to table New Zealand's country profile in the World Economics Forum's Travel and Tourism Competitiveness Index, which ranks New Zealand near the bottom of the world for its record. Order, leave us sort to table that document. Is there any objection? There is no objection. Question 